But, Brandon, we are going to move on into our next team here on the previews, and that's going to be the Pittsburgh Panthers. And this is a team coming into this year, had a good season last year, 8-5 and five season. I know they lost their bowl game against Northwestern in the pinstripe bowl, but this team did what they did. But you look at their losses, and you can't be mad at them. Northwestern, good team, like I said, in the pinstripe bowl. They lose to all three teams ahead of them in the Coastal last year, Virginia Tech, UNC, and Miami. But the only other loss they had was Oklahoma State, and they beat number 2 Clemson on a last-second field goal to win 43-2. to This is a team with a lot of promise. 43-42. to 43-42. I knew it was that one point, and I knew it was in the 40s. Thank you for catching me. 43-42. But this is a team with a new face, a familiar face for the Primetime Podcast, because we kind of asked, was last year's Alabama game with USC his coming out party? But is this season, we were one year off. This season could be Max Brown's coming out party. How do you see the former Trojan fitting in with the Panthers this year? Well, before I get to that question, I want to uh, kind of dissect a little bit of mm-hmm. what you talked about in their schedule last year. Yes, they lost to the three teams that were above them, but they lose to North Carolina on the road by just one point, un, thirty-seven un, to thirty-six. You lose against a good Virginia Tech team at home by just three points, and then you know Miami, you get spanked fifty-one twenty-eight. But that was in Miami. But then even the game on the road at Oklahoma mm-hmm. State, you lose by a touchdown, forty-five to thirty-eight. So this team, this Pitt team, was not far off. They were not far off at all, and I I think that what we can all say about those games, they gave up a whole lot of points, and defense was their struggle last season. Mm -hmm. But now getting to the other piece is Peterman, their quarterback, Nathan Peterman, he's gone. Yep. After a great season, almost 3,000 yards, 28-55 to be exact, 27 touchdowns, 7 interceptions through the air, and then he added 3 more on the ground combined for 30 total. But now they're going to be looking to have another guy go in there and replace him. And I think if Max Brown does anything less than what Peterman does, it's going to be a disappointment. It certainly will be for fans who are used to such a good quarterback that they had last Mm -hmm. year and what they had been used to um, there for Pitt. And you also look, James Conner is no longer there. Uh, Such an inspiration, I think, to everybody. But also just a great player. 20 total touchdowns on the season and just under 1,400 yards. So those two guys alone are going to be really hard to replace. But we take a look at Max Brown, and Max Brown wasn't he, – he just probably was not right in this, for, the, for the team. He was not probably right on the, on the right team. And in the situation with Alabama being that first game out of the gate, and he, he held the starting role for, what, a game and a half maybe? And – it did not go his way, but hopefully, sometimes all it takes is a bit of a change of scenery, mm-hmm. and that's what he is getting as he goes from Southern California over to Pittsburgh, and I think that this is a revitalization for him, and hopefully he's able to really invigorate uh, some life into into this offense um, after they're losing these two really great guys, and it's not a reinvigoration uh, that, that Pittsburgh didn't see last year. Mm-hmm. It's more of a reinvigoration that Max Brown can then say almost for himself, reinvigorating himself to be able to lead this offense the same way that it was led last year. Because when you take a look at the stats, offense, defense, special teams, what's going to really pop out to you? That they were next to last in passing, def- in passing defense. Mm-hmm. They were not good. They were not good defensively. That's where they really struggled. That's ultimately how they lost some of those games, especially three of those games that I had mentioned when you first started off. When we first started off, you take away one or two of those touchdowns, and it is a win. It is a win for Pitt, and hopefully that defense can get changed up. But I do think, I do have confidence in Max Brown this year. Because of the fact that he's getting a a different Mm -hmm. change of of scenery. He's getting another chance. And I think that he's got to be able to grab the bull by the horns because if it's not him, Pitt's got other guys there. Well, and the one guy you didn't mention, there's a trio of people departing from this team. You mentioned Connor. You mentioned Peterman. But they're also losing 
their offensive coordinator as well. That's a huge piece to this offense. And now some people might look at that and go, you know what, that can be a positive. New offensive coordinator with a new quarterback coming in, they can get each other on the same page. This offensive coordinator doesn't have to worry about, well, great, I got to have someone buy into my system because they're used to the old guy. However, I'm a little bit nervous about Max Brown coming in to this year because one of the other opponents that I mentioned or forgot to mention that they did beat was a Penn State team early in the year. I know that wasn't the Penn State team that we talked about at the end of the year, but they were still a really good team. And the thing that this Pittsburgh offense was so good with last year was efficiency, especially from their quarterback in Nath Peterman. And you look at the Penn State game, three touchdowns, one INT, only had 91 yards passing in that game. So with twenty, with 15 attempts, 91 yards, still threw three touchdowns in that game. Connors had 117 and one touchdown in that one. And then I look at the Clemson one because that's the game where they beat the, def, uh, the right now coming into this year, the defending national champions. Peterman, 37 attempts, throws for over 300 yards, five touchdowns, zero in the, the INT category, a goose egg, zero INT. So if Max Brown could come in, that's the number one thing he has to do. Limit turnovers. Don't let them turn the ball over because I know Max Brown has said, like, okay, like USC only got three starts there and then lost the job. He feels like he can kind of re, re put some uh, life into his career, into this job here at Pittsburgh. But if I'm a Pittsburgh Panther fan, I'm the way I would feel is I'm nervous until I see it because you're not really giving me any confidence coming in and the schedule for Pittsburgh this year doesn't change too much. You have the same opponents that you did last year. The only one that's the big difference is Clemson's not on the schedule. You're still going to get Penn state. This one's going to be on the road this time. You get Oklahoma State this time they're coming in. Still, those are two tough opponents back-to-back in September, both on ABC and um, Oklahoma State will be on ESPN too. So they're going to be national um, broadcasted games. Then you still look at it. You still got to play North Carolina. You still got to play Virginia, and you still got to play Miami. The weird thing about this season is, They're all at the end of the season. It's UNC, it's Virginia Tech, it's Miami. That could that's the part that could benefit Max Brown. Because if it's uh he's not looking too good in Penn State and Oklahoma, you can look at it as you know what? We still have if you still have confidence, you can go, we still have confidence. Let's just turn it over when the ACC start part our ACC part of our schedule starts. And you get guys like Syracuse. We've talked about them. They're not really a great team this year. They're they're a team that can go either one of two ways. North Carolina State, that might be a little bit of a tougher one from the mid to lower guys. But then Duke, Virginia, you have those games along with Rice, those games to kind of pad up that confidence before you get to the three heavy hitters at the end of your schedule. So, Ricky, I think uh, one of the big keys – for them this season is is pretty simple. Uh, you don't play Louisville, mm-hmm. you don't play Florida State, mm-hmm. and you don't play Clemson. Bingo. You don't play any of those big teams out of the uh, at, at Atlantic. Atlantic, and that is huge for them. And it's also huge that two of those final three games against those big opponents of North Carolina, Virginia Tech, Miami, two of the three are at home. Mm-hmm. You get North Carolina and Miami at home, Virginia Tech on the road. I I think that that's a a really big thing for you, but it it also then forces you to probably perform even better then. Okay, you get these big games, you're at home, you've got that advantage, hopefully you're able to get the win. And and I don't see them as, as not being competitive in those games. I see them definitely being able to stick with these teams, being able to score some points, and if they can get that defense cleaned up, especially in the secondary, I think that that can be successful. Now, Pat Narduzzi, what he did last year is there was a lot of um, just kind of 
bringing the house at quarterbacks. So they're bringing everybody. They're blitzing everyone up front, and mm-hmm. that's putting all the pressure then on those on on, on the uh, guys in the secondary. And if they couldn't get it done, boy oh boy, that was not good. And if they could not get to the quarterback in time, really not good. So. I think that if they are able to have a little bit more balance defensively in this next season, I think we might be able to see Pitt uh, pr- improve from what they did last year. Because you take a look at the, the schedule. Um, Youngstown State, I'm thinking that's going to be a win. And then you can also say Rice, Syracuse, NC State, Duke, and Virginia are wins. So there's six wins. And then you've got Penn State, which will be a close game. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma State, we know that they don't play a ton of defense. But they still return Mason Rudolph, great quarterback in the Big 12. And they return a pretty solid team. But again, last year, it was only a seven-point game. That was the final score. Mm -hmm. And I think that Pitt, they come out with a good game. They could get them. And then you've got North Carolina, Virginia Tech, and Miami. They win one of those games, at least one of those games. You'd like to think that they win two, but they win at least one of those. So Pitt is, I think, again, on on the road for an 8-5, and 9-4 and four season. That's where I see them. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think that Max Brown is not an upgrade from – what they had uh, last season at quarterback. Hard to be an upgrade Peterman. from Peterman. That's, I, I don't see him as an upgrade. I, I, I would, if I'm a fan of Pitt, I want to be able to hope that he's able to replicate those same numbers. If mm-hmm. he can do that, you're very happy. Mm-hmm. If he can get close to that, 25 touchdowns, same amount of interceptions, maybe even less, and yards about the same, 2,500, 2,600, be happy. Um, but I think that if they're if he's able to do that, the defense gets better. I think that you can add at least another win onto onto the record from last year and take away one of the losses. Now this is a pit team that's that is really trying to hang with these with these big brother teams mm-hmm. in the coastal, and I think they're going to do a good job well, of it. The they're biggest... they're going to be competitive, but you also have to take a look. There's teams that we have not talked about yet. They're all at the bottom. Uh, of this schedule, mm-hmm. uh, North Carolina, they lose a big guy. They don't have the Trubiscuit. Virginia Tech, we'll see where they're at, mm-hmm. and then Miami, we'll see. We'll see what's going on with them. No, so it's, my... it, it's it's nothing that's set in stone that says those three teams I just mentioned are mm-hmm. going to be the one, two, three. There's nothing set in stone there. Absolutely not. Most Pitt. likely, the fact that we're talking about how mm-hmm. that that they could be set in stone, they will not be in any. Fashion at all, so uh, that's the fun part of being able to do these things mm-hmm. well before the season starts. Is because we take this perspective now, see what happens as we move to the actual season, and then what unfolds there. Pitt to me is on the top of the fence, and they're just teeter tottering back and forth this year. Like at the beginning of the season, they're teetering. Which side do you want to be on? The bottom half of the division, or the top half of the division? And to me, that there's only two big things that play into this season. Number 1, we talked about him, Max Brown. I feel like a lot in the I feel like this year they're going to have to lean on Max Brown more than they would like to. They don't have Connor anymore. Peterman's no longer there. The defense has lost seven guys on that side of the ball. And I know that they're trying to do this whole well, we're trying to do addition via subtraction kind of a thing, but The thing with defensively that worries me is that this team put up, had a lot of points put up on them last year. Like a lot of their wins, you're seeing like upper 30s, upper 40s kind of games. And I know you're going up against quality quarterbacks and most of them. Here's the one stat with the defense that didn't sit well with me last year. Game against North Carolina, Mitch Trubisky. Now we've said he's not, he's no longer here. He's playing right here in Chicago now for the Chicago Bears, the Bears. However, that game, five touchdowns, zero INTs, zero INTs. Go over the Oklahoma State game, Mason Rudolph, over 500 yards, two touchdowns, zero INTs. Go over to the Clemson game, Deshaun Watson, almost 600 yards, 
that game, that was a sloppy game from Deshaun Watson, actually had him throw three INTs, and then Penn State, the McSwirls, that was his early kind of season. He was still, to me, getting into this kind of offense. One touchdown, one interception. You can't have guys throwing, like, you can't have guys throwing no interceptions, looking confident, going 5-0 and on you guys' touchdown to INT. And I know that, like you said, there's a lot of pressure on that secondary, but something needs to happen. You got you to gotta think about something that works because you can't put your secondary at such a disadvantage that then guys can go out there and just put up five, put up two touchdowns on you, and you're not getting any turnovers in that side of it as well. And that's why, because of how the defense is, I don't see them making huge strides. And I think that the success of the season comes on Max Brown. If he plays phenomenally and has a lights-out season, this team can compete because the thing that I that you mentioned, that bottom three teams, the three teams they play at the end, there's some questions. We're going to get to them. But the one that I look at the most is North Carolina. No longer have Mitch Trubisky. This could be Pittsburgh's chance to pounce there. And with a easier kind of ACC schedule compared to what they had last year, I think that this could be a year where they could maybe get into the top three and might be able to jump UNC depending on the kind of year that they have. But Brandon, before we move on, anything you think we missed with the Pittsburgh Panthers? Uh, One of the things I want to mention, too, is that with Pitt, they are losing two guys on the left side of the line, Dorian Johnson and Adam Biznawate. uh, Biznawati. I don't know how to say that last name. Um, But they are both now in the NFL, one for the Cardinals, one for the Giants. And it's going to be interesting as the other three will be staying, returning. Mm -hmm. But how do you fill that left side of the line, and do you feel confident with that? You know, if that's a weakness at all in the season – that could potentially uh, cause some issues. But mm-hmm. if you're able to shore that up and be okay there, then I, I think that uh, you're going to be just fine. You just need to be able to make sure you got protection, especially for a new guy, Max Brown, coming in to learn this system and uh, try and make a, try and make an impact right away. So just making sure that offensive line, not only for the quarterback, for the running back as well, because we've got a new guy who's going to be running there, Quadri Henderson, most likely, the guy who will get the majority of the work. Well, and like I said, I am a little bit not as optimistic as some might be because Max Brown of what he has showed us. However, there's always there's always time to change my mind and prove me wrong this upcoming year. But we're going to turn the conversation now on to you guys, Pitt fans. Let us know down below. What do you guys think about your team coming in? What kind of makes you nervous? What are you excited for in the 2017 season? Let us know down below in the comment section. 